to another episode of Matt. We are in Season 12, and my name is Kat Wendorf, and I'm a NASTA Certified Sports Yoga Instructor practicing in Port Orange, Florida. Today, we're going to work on something that will release the hip flexor. If you work where you're sitting most of the time, or if you happen to be just sitting most of the time, uh, the hip flexor tends to get stuck, and you need to release it. In order to release it, we're going to use props today. If you happen to have your blocks, please bring them and roll out your mat and meet me in tabletop. So here we are in tabletop. That's on my knees and on my hands, but I have the blocks underneath me today standing up. So if you'll please join me like that. If you don't have blocks, you can do it just on the floor. That's fine. Um, the blocks will help us as we release deeper into the pose. So for today, for the hip flexor, we are going to do a, a count of 15 when we get into the stretch. In order to get into the stretch, we begin in the neutral position of tabletop with a flat back. We're going to take our right foot and bring it behind us, toes pointing down, heel facing the wall behind you. And then we're going to release it back to tabletop. We're going to take the left foot, put it behind us for a little stretch. Toes facing the floor, heel facing the wall behind you. And release. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to ask you to make your way up to the front of your mat. I'm just going to move up just a little bit here. And Place your right foot back in the same position it was as before. And this time, if you're able to, press up so that your left knee can come forward and put it in between your blocks. So, if that's accessible to you, please do so. If not, you can just stay in the stretch that we were in and do the count with us that way. For this now, we're going to keep our front knee bent and our back leg straight, facing the wall behind us. We're going to inhale and exhale for a count of 15. I'll count you. Ready? One, two. You might want to keep your gaze at a focal point in front of you or at the floor if necessary. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 14, 14, 15. Now gently go back into plank, which means both feet are back, and you're facing forward, you're looking down, and you're hovering over your arms, and just hold that for a minute, and release back to tabletop, and then relax down, move your blocks into a child's pose for me. And just let that go, releasing your hands in front of you, maybe walking them out, and releasing your upper back and your lower back at the same time. And then come back up into tabletop. Hello, Darcy. Darcy would like to participate with us. And when you're ready, we're going to get in position to do the left side. So you're going to put your blocks standing up. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to lift up again. And we're going to come back up closer to our blocks and down into tabletop. Now I want you to take your left foot and extend it back. Toes are down into the mat. Your foot is against the wall as if you were pressing against the wall. And then we're going to 
Lift up with our arms, if you're able to. If not, you'll stay in this position for the whole time. And bring your right leg up in between your blocks. Holding steady onto your blocks. We're going to go ahead and begin with an inhale. Exhale, keeping that focal point in front of you. And 15. Back into plank. Oops, sorry, Darcy. Walk your way back into plank. Pull yourself over your front arms. Toes in front of you, facing down. You're hovering. Just hold it for a minute and then release back to tabletop. Move your blocks back into child's pose, stretching them through front arms in front of you, and rubbing a cat if you happen to have one, and also two or three or however many animals you have that join you today. Yes, and tell them how wonderful they are, if you like that. And to release. So, there you have it. That's your hip flexor. Important if you spend any time sitting during the day, um, if you're wheelchair bound, if you have a desk job, if you maybe drive for a living, the hip flexor release. Very, very important. Um, today we're going to continue with our Baron Batiste principles four through eight. And that is from a continuation of Journey into Power that we started on the last week. So, going forward, principle number four. Exceed yourself to find your exceeding self. Exceed yourself to find your exceeding self. If you do what you've always done, you'll get what you've always gotten. It's that simple. If you really want to grow behind beyond where you are to change your habits, your body, your mind, and your life, you need to exceed yourself. New frontiers are within us. The real stretch is internal. Know that what you get from doing things the way you do right now, your best thinking has gotten you where you are, but do you know that you will get more if you do just a little bit more beyond the usual? So challenge yourself. Principle number five, in order to heal, you need to feel. In order to heal, you need to feel. The real irony of spiritual growth is that instead of being some miraculous experience, it feels a lot more like going to pieces. As soon as we open ourselves and our lives up to be healed, suddenly all kinds of unpleasant feelings will come to the surface. We experience fear, disappointment, shame, and even rage certainly not the rosy glowing epiphanies they promised in the brochure. If you ask for wisdom or higher virtues, know that they only come through tri trials and tribulations. Moving forward, principle six, think less and be more. Think less and be more. I can always tell when students who come to my classes have been trained in, in Vanguard Yoga because it focuses almost entirely on perfect alignment. They do beautiful refined poses with every muscle and joint in the right place, but they never look like they are having any fun. Don't get me wrong, I think that the Yangar is an excellent basis for learning alignment, and I have a lot of respect for this method. 
My only complaint is these students never seem to come out of their heads. They know all the mechanics, but they don't have the flow that comes from getting out of your head. So when you're doing a posture, a pose, even if you're just learning it, don't focus so much on perfecting your alignment, especially when you're in a class environment and you look around you and you see how they're doing it. Instead, focus inward on your breath work and on your stretch and on your release those things will help you when you're being more in the moment and not thinking so much about, am I doing this right? Am I perfect? Uh, nobody is perfect. And principle seven, we are the sum total of our reactions. We are the sum total of our reactions. Bad luck, good luck, said the Chinese farmer. Who knows? A few days later, the stallion returned with a whole herd of wild horses. The farmer corralled all the horses, and the neighbors gathered around and said, Very good luck. Bad luck, good luck, said the farmer. Who knows? A week later, the farmer's son was trying to break in one of the wild horses. He got thrown off the horse and broke his leg. All the neighbors came around and said, Very bad luck. Bad luck, good luck, who knows? Several weeks later, the Chinese army came marching through the village looking for able-bodied youth to join the army and fight. When they came marching into the farmer's house, they saw his son had a broken leg, they left him alone, and they moved on. Very good luck, said all the neighbors. Bad luck, good luck, who knows? That's technically the end of the story, but it could go on and on. Does it ever actually stop? Isn't all of our stories in one way, isn't that in all of our stories one way or another? We don't really have experiences in life. What we have are how we react to the experiences. Things don't happen to us. Things happen in and of themselves. And what we do is we react to them. It's not the existence of standstill traffic that affects us because it's happening across town. We don't know about it. It doesn't bother us. But if the cars are at a dead stop on the very road that we need to take, Suddenly we're activated and we react to the existence of that traffic. It's not the traffic that we're experiencing, it's our reaction to it. So that's a really good principle, how we react. Principle eight, don't try hard, try easy. Don't try hard, try easy. Trying hard invites strain and struggle. Trying easy gives you levity and freedom to fly. When you try hard, you are using willpower, but willpower never works and will always fail you. That is because willpower is based on brute force as opposed to the soul force. Brute force is like trying to lift a Chevy truck with your bare hands. Soul force is having a pulley to raise it right up. Willpower comes from your intellect, but soul force is powered by your connection to the infinite universe. Your muscles can help you move heavy furniture, but your soul can help you move the earth. There is power in the universe more powerful than you are. And all you need to do is access it, relax, breathe, and surrender. Access, relax, breathe, and surrender. And we'll stop there today. But as you can see, Baron Baptiste dives deep into the principles and he will go a little deeper as we go further into the book. And we'll be incorporating some of his poses as we go along into the chapters. And we thank you for seeing us today. And Darcy is here on the mat. She didn't want me to pick her up, but sorry, girl. Have a great week, and we look forward to seeing you again on another episode of The Mat. Bye for now.